The only reason I mention is, as you know, we have different funds available for economic development projects, and sometimes uh, we don't look at infrastructure as part of an economic development project cost, but sometimes we ought to because there's state grant funds that are affiliated with economic development projects that might not otherwise be available for sidewalks. Now, I know my colleagues have other questions. Thank you so much for being here and testifying. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. Um, Assemblyman Otis. Oh, before Assemblyman Otis uh, you know, begins, I want to recognize uh, the presence of one of our local uh, assembly people, um, Assemblywoman Pat Fahey. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Madam Mayor. Nice to see you again. Saw you uh, last week at the local government uh, budget hearing. Wanted to talk more about water infrastructure. And, and uh, last year, as you know, because your community uh, is getting some of the funding, the legislature and the governor created this new water infrastructure improvement uh, grant program. And especially hearing that you're at 12% in terms of uh, your debt load, which is, which is higher than you want to be, and you have this consent order, the long-range plan for Albany to be able to comply with that consent order in the, in the uh, 15 years, you're going to need more grant money to be able to afford to do those projects. Maybe could you provide um, a little more detail? I, I guess you're, you were one of the communities that got funding in the first round, which was out of the first 75 million, um, you're getting one and three quarters million dollars towards um, some of your, your project work for this. But um, going forward, uh, maybe you could throw a little more detail on the magnitude of the need for more help and your inability to be able to comply with the consent decree and to make that debt picture even more problematic. Well, and the consent decree, it, it impacts Albany, but it also impacts a number of other communities, some of which are you know, much smaller than Albany. Um, we're certainly the largest of the communities that are part of that consent decree, and we are going to need to continue to have access to funds um, for the estimated $110 million of work. Um, and that $110 million of work is work to reduce runoff into the Hudson River. So for those communities, it's not necessarily the work as important as that is, that they need to be doing to ensure that they're continuing to deliver water to their residents. Um, and so it's that double burden of recognizing that we have to continue to make the investments in our water and sewer infrastructure that is carrying water to and sewage from homes and businesses in the city of Albany while we are also doing this additional work that's associated with reducing the runoffs into the Hudson River, and which is critically important. Um, but so, so it really is over that 15-year period balancing being able to make that additional investment in that work as well as investing and continuing to invest in the infrastructure that we have. Um, so while we're trying to make investments that will allow us to, as I said, encourage development, for example, out in the Harriman campus area, that's going to require that we actually move people from one of our sewer trunk lines to another sewer trunk line so that we can uh, expand capacity. Um, and that will take a significant investment. Part of that investment might be able to be borne by a future developer um, who, might, who would be developing that property, but that's an investment that we're going to need to make. So it's really balancing all three of those, um, you know, the economic development piece, the consent order piece, and then your day-to-day -day maintenance for the infrastructure that you have there. Um, and ensuring that we're not precluded from tapping into those resources or defining things too narrowly to be able to uh, access the infrastructure funds that have been proposed in the budget um, and that will need to continue to be, I think, um, provided into the future. You know, we know that it took a significant amount of subsidies to, um, you know, grow and expand um, our suburban communities. A lot of that was done decades past with funds that were made available by the state and the federal government. And we would just advocate that it's time to sort of look at the cities who have been on their own in funding that infrastructure and ensure that we're able to meet the needs as we see demand to live in our cities and to work in our cities grow. So, very interesting. The $110 million 
price tag for the consent order project, that there are significant other water infrastructure projects that are not part of the $110 million price tag. Would you have a number for those other projects outside of the consent order just for the city of Albany or just to, so that we can yeah. understand the enormity of the challenge because one of the things we're trying to do is look at driving more resources uh, to help municipalities in an area where they need it? Well, at the risk of like you give a mouse a cookie, right? Um, you, you ask your water commissioner, you know, what what list of projects you could come up with. Um, and there's probably over $350 million in water and sewer infrastructure projects um, that we could advocate for. Um, do we need all of those right now? Um, it, you know, this is really, uh, you know, looking out and planning methodically about um, where things are and what we're, you know, what we're doing and what we're concerned about. Um, you know, what keeps the, our water commissioner up at night? Um, you know, what trunk line is he really worried about? Where do we have um, some significant challenges with flooding? In the city of Albany, we took streams and we put them into pipes. And so I like to say that when it rains, if you see a stream, uh, you know, overflowing its banks, you say it's Mother Nature. But when you see it shooting up from um, a, a, a manhole cover or backing up into your basement, um, you know, understandably, uh, our residents and our businesses say this is the city's fault. And so it's looking at you know, what was done from an engineering standpoint maybe 100 years ago or 150 years ago, um, and if we were able to really re-engineer it to what we would want in today's standards. Um, I believe that the list that uh, the Water Department came up with was about $350 million. 382, sorry. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And, 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 um, your, your, uh, one of your Albany representatives, Pat Fahey, was a big supporter of that program being created, so you should know that as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Um, Madam uh, Assemblywoman, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you for speaking on behalf of cities generally. And I guess one of my questions is, and the chairman alluded to it, doesn't it make sense to have uh, or are you proposing sort of an urban infrastructure bank idea that in addition to you know, the governor's proposal on capital infrastructure would allow cities particularly to find ways to rebuild their infrastructure, which is not just roads and bridges as you've described, it's a range of things. I mean, have you proposed in a formal way that idea or is there talk with the governor's office about that? We had discussions, uh, this is my, the beginning of my third year in office, the beginning of my first year in office when um, the idea of, you know, setting up a, um, a fund, and maybe it, there, you know, there was a, a talk of using settlement funds for um, uh, land banks, um, right. that same type of concept for cities. Um, so there were discussions with the former chair of this committee around that issue. Um, and I do believe that he actually put forward a proposal, but I don't know that it was um, anything that was ever acted on. Um, it's something that we talk about within the, the New York State Conference of Mayors um, as a need. And I think that um, in, in looking at the, I think it's just a natural follow-on from what for what's happening in the REDC uh, context because we are uh, in this region f working much more closely together as cities, talking about these challenges um, on a much broader basis, trying to be creative about solutions. Um, you're going to hear from Mayor McCarthy in Schenectady, which is a neighboring city, um, and the mayor of Troy, and we have looked at how we can. Um, either apply together for infrastructure money so that we have, you know, it, at the federal level we can be more effective. Um, so we're really willing to roll up our sleeves and work together. But I think having something dedicated to the infrastructure of our cities um, in connection with the economic development that we're seeing in our cities is something that all of us would uh, advocate for. Thank you. The other thing is you, you spoke briefly about public transportation, and I know this is an infrastructure hearing, but clearly there's a tremendous um, interplay between public transportation. I know you're very familiar with that. Um, I believe in all, it's in Albany County 
uh, transportation system in Albany, the pub public bus, is that correct? It's actually regional. So it's, it's the Capital regional. District Transportation Authority, and it encompasses Albany, Schenectady, Rensselaer, Saratoga. I think those are the only counties. Yeah. So I guess my question is, how dependent are you, or, and I know certainly state government is, on an effective and fully funded public transportation system for the economic development activities you want to support in Albany? Um, they're critically important. And one of the things that we are advocating for with CDTA is this issue of how we get our employees to the jobs that exist in this area. So to get from the city of Albany up to the Global Foundries plant, we haven't cracked that nut yet. We haven't figured it out. And I don't think Schenectady has or Troy has either. Um, one of the things that I do hear from employers is that they're having a challenge finding employees because we're not able to connect employees and, 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 and look at shifts and look at a, you know, a more comprehensive way um, to get people there. And, and that all comes down to dollars and investment. How are we going to pay for it? Um, but we're doing that work. You know, that is, it's not something that we're just wringing our hands over. Um, we are actively doing that work, and we are seeing um, some changes in bus routes being made um, and in how we're approaching um, transportation um, on a regional level and on a regional basis. And so that is an investment that, you know, CDTA is seeing a tremendous increase in demand, which is a good news story for all of us. Right. Thank you, and thank you, Chairman, for calling this hearing. This, I know for me, for the city of Yonkers, this issue is essential for cities throughout New York, which are really struggling, and I appreciate your calling the hearing and, and your testimony. Thank you very much. Assemblyman, uh, Assemblywoman Fahey, I'm sure you have a few questions for your hometown mayor. I appreciate that, uh, and thank you as well for, for calling this, this hearing. Uh, sorry I was a few minutes late. I'm not on the committee, but uh, as others have mentioned, this is of paramount importance, and uh, uh, with our upstate caucus, it is a continual, a weekly conversation uh, among members. So uh, appreciate your words. Can you, as you know, I represent more than Albany. I represent three, uh, three towns, and the minute um, uh, for instance, a number of our roads, whether it's key uh, roads from um, leaving, starting here in the city and, and moving out to the towns, the minute we hit the, um, the boundary, they are state roads covered by the state. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know you, you mentioned it as I, was, as I was coming in, but Western Avenue, Delaware Avenue, in terms of even just um, uh, not just the upkeep, maintenance, and infrastructure, but also uh, snow. Well, we've had a little bit of a break this year, to everybody's uh, surprise. Uh, it's chagrin for uh, the kids in the city. But um, can you talk about how, how that works and then the burden that that puts as well on our cities? Well, it, it is a, a significant and important responsibility uh, that is borne by cities. And I think it is, um, you know, in, in looking at that, I think that that is one of the areas where uh, we have a practice that for which times have changed um, dramatically. The wealth has moved to the suburbs. I think at the time it was viewed that the state, um, these rural areas didn't have the tax base to be able to maintain the roads in towns and, and in villages. Um, and that has completely shifted. The tax base has grown exponentially in our suburbs. Um, and uh, in our cities, we have our concentrations of poverty, yet the responsibility for that infrastructure remains at the city government level um, in our cities. We are working, uh, we've, in, we're investing in some new technology. Um, the city of Albany's uh, has not invested in a new IT system since 1998, so we're going through the very painful process of um, getting into the 21st century. And one of the first questions that I'm asking our Department of General Services to answer now that they're going to have data is what does it actually cost us um, to plow those roads, to be responsible for filling potholes, for all of the maintenance things? What is that really costing us so that we can have um, a deeper conversation about that and that policy that exists statewide? Thank you, because it would be helpful, and it is one of the complaints we get, um, that because the state is responsible for some of these major roads the minute we hit the boundary of the city, uh, it's, it's another issue that I think, in terms of uh, fairness, that does need to be addressed. 
Uh, you mentioned roughly 380, roughly $382 million in water projects. What are you getting from the state now beyond the competitive grants uh, that, that were just discussed and championed by Mr. Otis and McDonald last year? And, and uh, again, I'm pleased to see the governor has put in his budget and we are going to shoot for more this year. I think it's, uh, uh, in some ways, it's not a surprise the demand on those monies, um, but I think it, it bodes well for getting uh, additional resources uh, and we're solidly behind that. But what are you getting now beyond the, beyond the grant? It, it, it really is limited to um, grants and applying for, um, you know, funding through EFC. Um, so, you know, we, we apply for, you know, every source of state funding where we think we have a project that qualifies. Um, and then ratepayers are, um, and, and our operating budget supports the rest of the infrastructure investment that we're making. Okay. Last question. Of the city budget, what percent, and in rough numbers, what percent is going to maintain roads, bridges, and and the infrastructure. Do you have? Do you even break it out that way? It's you know. I mean, and if not, that's our, fine. You can get back to arguably us. all of our Department of General Services um, is in support of infrastructure. That's what the General Services Department does. Um, that budget is approximately. Uh, I didn't bring my that's okay. my budget that's okay. with me, but I, I think it's approximately twenty million. I think it's approximately twenty million dollars a year. So okay, so a hefty yep. share of your yep. of your overall budget. Uh, again, thank you, thank thank you again uh, to the chair for holding this hearing because it is just a constant uh, conversation and one. Um, uh, you know, I, I've used the example in a few places now in listening to the Troy testimony last week to hear about not the pipe that burst, but the um, one of the other pipes that, that uh, I'm sure keeps you up at night, Mayor Madden, is from 1860. And it's just a, it's a stunning, uh, a, a stunning statistic to think that uh, the, the one that didn't burst is from 1860. So we clearly have uh, a, a real challenge here and, and we can't keep putting it off without having a future of catastrophe. So thank you again. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Um, one final question to close. Mr. Goodell. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor. I want to ask you to clarify a little bit about what the state role is on state highways that go through the city. Um, so, in, go ahead. In particular, does the state pay for paving? Do they pay you anything for plowing? I assume you're responsible for all underground drainage and curbing. Correct. So what is the allocation of expenses on a state road that goes into the city of Albany? So with the exception of I-85, which is a true highway, we are responsible for plowing, for uh, maintaining those roads, filling potholes. Um, when we've had major reconstruction, for example, of um, uh, Route 20 through the city of Albany, um, we were able to get uh, state DOT funding for that. Um, but from the, from the maintenance standpoint, um, what happens is the, the state is responsible up to the city line, and then the city takes over. Um, and you don't receive any payment for correct. plowing? You don't receive any reimbursement for maintenance? No. But the capital projects have But we do receive, I mean, you know, I mean, not to argue against myself here, but, you know, I think that it's really understanding and being able to communicate to the state what that cost is. It, and, and that's incumbent upon us to be able to do that. Thank you. Thanks. Madam Mayor, thank you very much for being here. Your testimony was most helpful and hopefully will accomplish something. You don't go yet. Okay. Because I'm going to say this to you and tell you all the other mayors that are here. Okay? We have a hearing room, okay, where, where our committee meets. A nice, nice room with large blank walls. And I'm really trying to get posters from all the wonderful cities, and there are 62 of them, okay, around this great state of New York. So if you got an extra Albany poster or Rensselaer poster or Troy poster or whoever else might be here, send it on in and we'll hang it up. I'd love to. Thank, thank you. you very much. I'll be happy to help. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Madam Mayor, thank you again. I appreciate it. We'll now call upon the Honorable Gary R. McCarthy from the great city of Schenectady. Mayor McCarthy, thank you so much for being here. 
Um, you, you've been here a while, so you know what I said originally. You give your testimony any way you feel more comfortable, okay? And again, and we'll uh, be Mr. Here Chairman, to, to uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Uh, members of the committee do appreciate uh, and just uh, being able to appear. Uh, have submitted uh, some written testimony. I was going to summarize that and then maybe just have uh, a little dialogue that continues on really the great base uh, of information that Mayor Sheehan has laid that uh, you know, her comments clearly focus on the city of Albany, but they are uh, applicable to communities across the state, whether it happens to be New York City, Schenectady, Rochester, or Buffalo. Uh, the challenges of aging infrastructure present one of the most critical hurdles to the recovery and growth across our entire state. You're seeing a renewed interest in cities. People are starting to move back. We want to be able to create that environment that allows people to take the advantages of communities, take pride in where they live, and do it in a cost-effective manner. And so I would submit to you today that we're, yes, asking for money, we're asking for help, but really what we're looking for is a partnership that allows a level of equity. So yes, there is some ability to pay for uh, some of the infrastructure, some of the uh, maintenance repairs in future development at the local level. But the things that were put in place, when you look at the funding, it was not only local money, but it was state money and federal money that built uh, the infrastructures that allowed uh, communities in New York State to uh, thrive, really set uh, an example for communities across the country. Now, as they're a little bit older, they're aging, somewhat a little bit tarnished, uh, we're looking for, again, what I will say is that uh, partnership that allows us to uh, create a level of rebirth. We've seen a, a tremendous amount of excitement and reinvestment in downtown Schenectady. Uh, our uh, Proctor's Theater is uh, drawing just under 700,000 people a year into that facility. It used to run uh, 35 to 40 events a year. Now uh, it's really the Proctor's campus, it's the GE Black Box Theater, it's the uh, main stage and some other venues within that. They run 1,700 events a year. Some of those are small meetings, some are uh, major Broadway shows, uh, and everything in between. We want people to be able to come into the community, to be able to drive there, to walk there, and when they get there, have an experience that uh, is pleasurable and that uh, will lay the groundwork where they want to come back. Our neighborhoods are still very much challenged, where we have some very good neighborhoods, but housing stock uh, is old. Uh, as Mayor Sheehan pointed out, the uh, tax rates in some of our suburban areas are lower than our urban areas, and it becomes hard to attract people to come back. And you look at the challenges that uh, are in school districts and urban areas, uh, a lot of our ability to deal with that is to make sure that we have the infrastructure in place to provide what people want and what they need. And a lot of your focus uh, these hearings are on water, sewer, uh, street surface, and uh, related, we call the hard infrastructure. And as Mayor Sheehan uh, alluded to, it's also broadband access to make sure that we can build and maintain those things that the traditional infrastructure, but make sure that we're creating an environment, an opportunity for 21st century infrastructure. And my comments will differ slightly from Mayor Sheehan and other, even Mr. Chairman, when you talk about uh, getting fiber and broadband access into uh, neighborhoods, buildings, and uh, across uh, communities. What I believe is you're looking at a uh, technology leap in want to look at wireless communication, which is really the next generation of access, and so that you don't have to have fiber or that cable going into every building or every house. And that wireless communication is an area that you're seeing uh, across the world 
Other places are adopting it, uh, applying it. And the United States uh, has somewhat of a more hit and miss application of that. And I believe that New York State and our cities in this state have the opportunity to set an agenda and develop technologies that will allow us to uh, be leaders and will exceed uh, expectations of uh, our residents and allow us, again, to continue to attract people back to our urban areas. You've seen uh, you know, an economy in New York City that is really second to none, where it uh, is the envy of uh, places around the world. Our upstate economies, are, uh, the communities are much more challenged. But we're seeing that uh, break down. And there's, there's been leadership from the governor, uh, from the legislature, where people are viewing that differently. How do we work together? How do we create incentives to bring people here, change that image of New York State of being a highly taxed, highly regulated state into one that is uh, open for business, that wants people, wants businesses to come here. And that I believe that the leadership that you can provide will help assist us in, again, forming that partnership to enable us to maintain the infrastructure, the water and sewer facilities that we have in place, uh, continue to develop our roads, and then also lay forth that uh, 21st century technology of uh, broadband communication and really a wireless format. And uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, conclude my formal comments and just open it up for discussions and uh, hopefully uh, speed things along for the entire... Thank you, Mr. May. I appreciate that. That's, that. that's great. You know, I've just had my district in the Bronx is, is, is developing a tremendous rate, uh, believe it or not. Because of your leadership, I hear. <laughs> yes, probably. Um, uh, 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 we have the largest indoor mall in the, uh, in the city of New York that was just recently completed. We have uh, um, business centers that have been built and uh, a new international Trump golf course that's uh, world class. Okay. Frustrating, though, for me, is the roads, getting in and getting people out of, of these wonderful developments. You've got a casino that's going up over there, okay? Yes. And we're all eagerly looking forward to see what's going to happen. What's happening with the, the infrastructure as far as roads uh, to easily get uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be coming in and out? Do you have problems in that area? Yes, we do. Uh, we've been able to, again, with uh, state and federal funding, uh, redevelop part of Erie Boulevard, which is actually the old Erie Canal, but will, uh, it's been uh, roughly 100 years ago converted to a street, and that will allow access, primary access, in and out of the casino, and then our continued development in downtown. We've uh, been able to uh, rebuild approximately two-thirds of that. There's still about a third where I'm trying to line up money to make it uh, uh, visually attractive, make sure the subsurface infrastructure is in place, and uh, provide walkability to connect the casino with the developments that we've had in downtown. And that's uh, roughly uh, Three million, a little bit over three million dollars are the estimates to be able to do that. And I, as I sit here today, don't have that money in place to be able to actually start the construction. The developer, is the developer putting in any money for this? They are on uh, site work. They've helped with uh, some of the subsurface work in terms of rerouting some of our sewer lines. And we're looking to work with them. Uh, where we have the casino development, we also have uh, immediately adjacent to that project Mohawk Harbor, which is a $175 million mixed-use development of uh, residential and uh, commercial property. And so, yes, and at the same time, it's a old industrial site where we're going through, we're redeveloping it, but you have to make the numbers work in comparison to what the options are for a developer to undertake a project in a suburban location. Where you have the higher property tax, when we look to bring that online, we have to be cognizant of 
those costs in the relative costs that developer looks at when they choose where they're actually going to do a project. Okay. Mayor McCarthy, I know Rens uh, Rensselaer, um, Schenectady is one of the fine old cities of New York, and you guys uh, seem to be doing a great job up there. I've been to the Proctor Theater to see a number of uh, you know shows. The downtown area there is a model of what downtown areas uh, should be doing, and I hope uh, Thank you, you continue your, your renaissance. Um, Mr. Goodell? Have any questions? 